Hey everybody, just want to do a quick uh, video lecture here about uh, richness and diversity of species. Um, you could also use this for um, an example would be diversity of uh, like habitats as well. But uh, the, so this is an Excel spreadsheet that you're looking at on the screen now and I'm going to sort of run you through how this, um, how this works. Uh, I will say that the, I have Shannon diversity shown here, or Shannon Wiener diversity. And there are several different diversity indices. So if you get into using uh, are interested in community uh, ecology and are needing to do sort of a diversity uh, index and report diversity, then you might want to look into which is the most appropriate diversity index to use. But you'll see that um, in this made up example, I have species that are A through K. So there are 11 different species in this community or in these sites and the sites are one through 10. So it's easiest probably to organize uh, the data in this way. This is typically the way um, it would be um, put into a spreadsheet and also the way you would use it in program R. And I'm going to show you a little bit of program R in just a minute. Um, so we have 10 sites and 11 species. This is a random number generator um, that I have created. And so it's um, equals ran between 0 and 10. So the, the lowest number of species that we could have uh, or the lowest number of individuals of a given species is zero and the maximum number would be 10. And then I had to add uh, plus 0 0.0001 because if you have a zero in your Shannon diversity index, it com comes back as an error. So uh, you have to add in this point 0 0.0001. And um, so you can see every time I, um, every time I, let's see here. Hit enter, it changes the values, okay, in here because it just regenerates a random number. Uh, richness for this is simply um, count these columns if, um, uh, I'll count these columns along this row. So count these columns uh, of uh, row three and if they're greater than or equal to one, okay. And so in this instance, there are no uh, zero numbers. Uh, or 0 0.001 numbers in the in the row three, and so uh, richness is 11. You'll notice down in the next um, row, row four, there are there are two instances where it is quote equal to zero or 0 0.001. That is um, column J, and also or species I, and then also species A or column B, and then. Um, and so that'll, that'll add up richness. And richness, remember, is just a simple count of the number of uh, different types of taxa that are in a sample. And you have to be sort of careful using richness because you can have, um, for example, here we could have really low numbers. All of the, um, in, for example, site one, all of the species could just show up as one individual and then maybe uh, the last one had 10 individuals, the last uh, species had 10 individuals, so it would be sort of maxed out. And so we'd end up with 11, a richness of 11, but really we have a pretty poor community. So we use these diversity indices as a better, um, a better way of doing this. I'm going to share this, um, this Excel file with you guys as well. I'm not sure exactly what I may have to do with it yet, but um, so I'm going to double click on here so you see the, the um, equation. And it is equal to the log of sum of all of the columns, all of the species, minus the sum product of all the species, comma log 10 of all the species, divided by the sum of all the species. So I know it's a lot to sort of take in. Don't worry so much about that. I'm more interested in you being able to, to play around with this and take a look at it and use it for yourselves. So we hit enter again. And so again, um, in this situation in site A, or site one, we have eight individuals, um, eight different species that show up. And you can see that we have one of our lower values for diversity. Uh, we have 11 here, 11, and you'll notice that the diversity indices are not equal in spite of having the same number of uh, different species. And then let's see if I can find an example where um, sometimes you can have higher diversity with a lower richness. Um, doesn't look like that's the case here. And let me, let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, let's try it again. And let's see here. Um, uh, no, still didn't. Some, but uh, if you play around with it and hit enter enough, you'll end up with an instance where you get higher diversity 
with a lower uh, number of uh, lower richness than uh, than higher richness, and that's because of the distribution. So you could have, as I said earlier, um, one site that has really really low numbers of uh, individual individual taxa or species, and then one would have high numbers. So you have a high richness but low diversity. All right, so that's the cell um, spreadsheet. And this is, again, this is alpha diversity. So you can think about how to calculate beta diversity and gamma diversity. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that here. And then I just wanna do a quick, um, show you quickly some, some work in R. And I'm not gonna go through the details of how to make this work in R, but I just wanna um, sort, of, sort of show you how uh, a data set might look in R. Um, and how you would use that. So um, just to give you an idea, this is uh, some work from my dissertation. And I had um, the bug, what I call bug community is the data set that I pulled in. And so I'm gonna do the number of rows uh, in row uh, bug com. And you'll see that there are, um, well, I didn't show up, why not? I don't know. Um, there are 112 rows for BugCom. There are 237 different columns for Bug Community data set. And so this is the, um, these are all the different column names, okay, for my uh, Bug Community data set. And so it starts with the stream name, uh, status that was either a, a um, dam that had a top water release or a dam that had a um, bottom release or a, um, a reference stream. These are the different sites, the distance from the dam, and then you get into richness, and then the um, sum, and this is the total number of individuals. Um, then we have uh, other, other. Um, this was abundance um, as a column. Then we have these different uh, genera that were represented. Uh, then we get down into um, uh, EPT, which is ephemeroptera, plecoptera, trichoptera, those are uh, species or, or gen genera that are typically associated with good quality streams. And then some others, there's this uh, thing called glimpse that, that is uh, here, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then they get into these um, habitat variables. So what type of habitat well, we had there as well and some others. Um, so, and you sort of wonder why I have all that maybe um, in this data set and it sort of culminates into this figure um, so i'm going to zoom into this figure and uh, talk about that briefly so my dissertation was really looking at the distance or how communities uh, bug communities aquatic macroinvertebrate communities changed as you moved away from a dam and so this upper panel panel a is represented um, in this upper right hand corner is sites that are close to the dam this is 800 meters from the dam. The closest I sampled to the dam was considered, quote, zero. It was as close as I could get to the dam uh, as safely possible. And I went all the way down to about 5,000 meters from the dam. But you can see that um, these, these lines sort of represent those distances. And then there are circles on the screen, triangles, and then these dark, um, these, these black squares. The black squares represent a reference stream. And so the reference stream, you'll see that the um, sites are all very similar to one another. So they group really closely together. And then the um, dam streams, those that are um, have a, a top water release, so in other words, the water comes over the top of the dam uh, to go downstream, are represented by these triangles, and those that were bottom water release are represented by these um, the uh, circles down uh, that you see. The other thing that you'll notice in this figure is that there are some really small circles and triangles. Uh, most of the squares are about the same size. Then there are some really large um, triangles and circles. And that is representative of richness. So the really small circles or triangles are really low richness and the really big ones are uh, high richness. And then the, this uh, panel B you'll see over here are some different metrics that I was looking at. Um, so tolerance, um, values, richness, um, et cetera. And then these are the different genera that are represented down here as well as these different indices, glimpse and EPT. And you can see that um, these, these um, if you were to sort of draw a line right here in the middle where those points all meet, to the right of that line represent these really sort of poor indices or poor species, species that are representative of disturbed environments. And then as you move further away, remember this is distance going from right to left in panel A. So as you go from right to left in panel C, we get much higher values of what we consider to be good um, species indic indicators um, or habitat in or um, genera indicators, betas and acentrella, uh, sorry, and then glimpse and EPT have higher values. 
And then lastly, you can see over here in panel D, these are the habitat variables that we have. And so we have depth increase as you went from the center to the right. Um, we have, this is a, um, a landscape variable, percent of grassland. So there are areas that were more agriculturally related, had poor values typically uh, as temperature increased uh, this way. Um, the, you actually got sort of higher values. It had to, this had to do a lot with how I sampled in terms of uh, top water versus bottom water dam releases. And then as you see, you can see here that as percent forested area increase, you got much better, um, much better um, communities, for example, the Glimpse EPT um, samples. And then also as dissolved oxygen, that's DO down here, dissolved oxygen increase. So this is sort of how community ecologists would sort of extend what you've learned about in community ecology and try to understand not just um, what the diversity is like or what the richness is like of a, a given site or a series of sites, and really try to understand in a broader context what the um, relationship is between these different species, the communities uh, that they represent, and habitat variables, so what types of things are driving good versus bad communities. Um, I'm not gonna have you do anything with this. I just wanted, wanted to provide this to you to sort of give you an idea of where, uh, where you can go with community ecology. So with that, I'll uh, let you go and look forward to seeing you guys again soon.